When you hear global warming, do you think of polar bears and icebergs? What about the smoke that hangs over Boise during the wildfire season? Do you think of diminishing snowpack at Bogus leading to a shorter ski season? Or even worse, a decreasing potato yield? How can we protect both our Idaho way of life and our planet? To mitigate global warming, we need to develop carbon-free ways to generate the power that we use every day. It turns out the biggest source of carbon-free energy in the country started right here in Idaho. Picture one was taken in 1951 in Arco, Idaho, and it captures the first time nuclear fission was ever used to generate power. To this day, Idaho National Laboratory is the leading nuclear energy research center in the country. To get as much power as possible while maintaining safety unmatched by any other power source, researchers like myself are continually developing advanced nuclear fuel. Before we can use these new fuels to generate power, we do exactly the same thing we do to cars. We crash test them. Imagine for a moment that you're trying to design a new car while maintaining safety standards. You send your car in for a crash test and you get your results back. Fail. Now what? How do you improve if you don't know what went wrong? The same is true for nuclear fuel. The more information that we can get out of our tests, the more we know how to improve. Now to get data out, we need sensors that can survive the crash. In nuclear energy, a crash means simulating a meltdown. This means incredibly high temperatures and irradiation. So my research focuses on developing incredibly durable temperature sensors to survive the crash. Now, just as we need to understand our fuel's performance, we need to understand our sensor's performance. Panel three shows a model I've developed to predict sensor performance, knowing only the material that it's made of. So experimental performance is shown in black and the performance predicted by my model is shown in green. Panel four shows an example of my model's predictive capabilities. Since it only needs to know the material, I can predict how the performance may change during the crash. I've looked at several different types of material damage and I've identified that a radiation damage in the form of technetium shown in red is going to have the most detrimental impact on our performance. Now we know to focus our engineering efforts on how to mitigate this type of damage. By helping the development of these temperature sensors, I aim to help us get as much information as possible out of our nuclear crash tests. This will help us to develop advanced nuclear fuel, and I hope this will help us to move away from fossil fuels. This way, we can preserve both Idaho and our planet.